now we are back to diffraction after discussing the difference in uh, diffraction experiments uh, between reactor and a pulse neutron source we are back to the diffraction or structure determination that means no energy analysis using neutrons now most of us are aware that we actually as soon as you make a sample we take it through a x-ray powder diffraction and we try to see whether we can identify the peaks that are listed in the international table for diffraction from powder so we can do powder diffraction for phase identification which is the simplest thing to do for strain analysis preferred orientation and crystallographic and magnetic structure so all these are identified all these experiments can be club under powder diffraction i should say which is the most commonly used technique with neutrons also with x rays and i will discuss some of the techniques most importantly i will introduce you to crystallography and magnetic structure determination together with x ray crystallography is required for various samples then uh, if you can make a single crystal a good single crystal because in neutron diffraction not only you need a single crystal if you want to do ab initio structure determination but you also need to make a slightly larger single crystal because neutron intensity is poorer but still in case of hydrogen bonded crystals which is not possible to study with x ray single crystal diffraction is done i will very briefly mention this part next another important thing is local structure in liquid and amorphous systems uh, this is extremely important for neutrons because uh, for determination of local structure you need to go to very high q and neutrons have an advantage that it can penetrate deep since it can penetrate deep we can take a reasonable dimension of a sample which will give the bulk liquid or a bulk amorphous system and you can find out the local order in this system i will introduce you to this technique with uh, large q range experiments to find out local structure another very important technique which has become extremely popular not only with physics people but chemists metallurgists and many others it is small angle neutron scattering small angle you can also call it small q often we are talking about angle angle and q we will use interchangeably so small angle neutron scattering is nothing but a small q neutron scattering and since it is small q we can always say that uh, if q in an experiment q max is small then the length resolution is twice pi by q max q max if q max equal to 0.1 angstrom inverse then this comes to around 60 angstrom inverse 60 angstrom that means inherently if i do an experiment in the small q range say up to 0.1 angstrom inverse then that experiment will tell me about structures with a resolution inherent resolution of 60 angstroms so with 60 angstrom resolution i cannot see the crystal structure or the crystallographic structure in a system what i will see is the in the average over this length scale so that is a mesoscopic length scale to compare a typical diffraction experiment will be around going up to 10 angstrom inverse this might go to 120 degrees 130 degrees in an experiment whereas 0.1 angstrom inverse experiments are almost a near direct beam experiments i will discuss it when i discuss uh, the small angle instruments so small angle is used heavily uh, for 
determining structure at mesoscopic length scale and often many researchers are not keen to to get information at uh, near, near crystallographic or near atomic level resolution but at mesoscopic level resolution. For example, we may talk about uh, micelles forming in liquids or as I told earlier in my transparency, uh, pores in solids or precipitates in metallurgical samples. This can be used by, this can be understood by using small angle neutron scattering. Another technique which has come up recently is neutron reflectometry for thin film structure. So today, especially for applications, thin films are very important and the neutron reflectometry deals with films deposited on various substrates and the reflection, I mean optical reflection, optical reflection, not Bragg reflection optical reflection reflection following snail's law but from the reflected beam reflected intensity we can understand the thickness of these layers from a uh, heterostructure that is reflecting neutrons their interface roughnesses they can be determined using neutrons and x-rays and Neutrons can also give you magnetization, magnetization as a function of depth, which is unique again for neutrons. And all this we will be discussing when we discuss neutron reflectometry, which will be coming under the heading of mesoscopic length scales. So, my this will be my flow that I will start with powder diffraction, various techniques. Briefly, single crystal neutron diffraction, then liquid and amorphous systems and local structure, small angle neutron scattering, and neutron reflectometry for thin film structure under the heading of diffraction or structure at various length scale. Now, for diffraction experiments, we I told you earlier that the for Bragg diffraction from a lattice, k minus k prime should be equal to G, a reciprocal lattice vector and for a for an elastic experiment the a magnitude of K and K prime are same. So this is a requirement that K minus K prime is equal to G. Now I can show you that this requirement of K minus sorry k minus k prime equal to g this translates to k minus g or k plus g both ways equal to k prime plus or minus g are equivalent this comes to to k dot g plus g square equal to zero this is i am quoting from kitten the most basic solid state physics book and k dot g is k is nothing but twice pi by lambda and g is giving by 2 pi by d h k l where d h k l is the d spacing of h k l set of planes and g is equal to twice pi h k l basically this 2 k dot g plus g square i can write 2 k dot g if i consider plus g and minus g equivalent is equal to g square or 2 k g sin theta because k this is k prime this is g so k dot g will be k g sin theta is equal to g square or 2 sin theta sorry 2 k sin theta k sin theta equal to g substituting k is equal to twice pi by lambda and g is equal to twice pi by d h k l i will get back to d h k l sin theta equal to lambda which is my bragg's law so 
many of us have started with Bragg's law, but I started k minus k prime equal to g because now I want to, and they are equivalent as I showed you just now. Now I want to get back to something called evolved construction. Now if k minus k prime is equal to g, this construction was done by evolved. So if I consider an incident beam ki and the reflected beam or the scattered beam ending, this is the incident beam ending on a reciprocal lattice. So this is a reciprocal lattice. Then when k minus k prime equal to g, I get a reflected beam. That means if I consider the three dimensional reciprocal lattice and with this construction I can say that whenever the equation k minus k prime equal to g whenever the scattered beam hits a reciprocal lattice vector then I have got a diffracted beam is this direction. So this is known as evolved construction. This is the most fundamental construction in case of diffraction, atomic diffraction. That the, I have superimposed the incident beam and this is the origin of the reciprocal space and with that I just show that k minus k prime equal to g. So in this thing that means I can have a reciprocal scattered beam in this direction because it is hits. Similarly I can have a reciprocal lattice vector being equal to k minus k prime equal to g. So all these points which are falling on this sphere, intercepting this sphere from the reciprocal lattice point, they signify that there is a diffracted beam in this direction. And that's what our Lowe patterns that we see from single crystals are all about. So Lowe pattern is nothing but it comes out straight away from the evolved construction. And in case of a polychromatic beam, I must add here that in case of pulse neutron sources, since you have polychromatic beam, so your k you have got because k dictates the size of the sphere that you are plotting. You can see that this sphere or the circle in two dimension is a radius of k. But k for a range of wavelength is for a polychromatic beam. There is a lambda minimum, there is a lambda maximum. Lambda maximum means k is minimum and lambda minimum means k is maximum. So I have a range of lattice point wavelength and you can see I have superimposed these two spheres. This is the origin of the circle. Uh, this is a, so they are superimposed on the reciprocal lattice vector and all these reciprocal lattice vectors will satisfy 2D sin theta equal to lambda for one of the wavelengths in this beam of lambda max to lambda min and then again you will have a reflection, Bragg reflection in that direction. So I take you back to again to Kittel. Actually here I, I hope some of you have done this experiment. We have done this during a master's day. So this shows how a powder crystal now looks like. So this is called Debye camera. This is known as Debye camera where a photographic plate was wrapped inside this circle. This is the incoming beam. This is the outgoing beam. This is the outgoing beam. This is the incoming beam. And the powder crystal is kept at the center. What I myself did was a copper crystal if I remember it correct 40 years back. Now here instead of a single crystal Ewall construction. Now imagine I have got a powder crystal. If I have got a powder crystal, then imagine this is the incident beam. So if one crystallite satisfied it in this direction, there will be other crystallites. So in having, if this and this is the incident beam, I can have crystallites equally oriented with the same theta but at different angle. So that means I will be rotating the crystal around the incident beam and the reflected beam will describe a circle in the reciprocal space. So now this is a perfect powder crystal which will have a debye shearer cone. This is known as a debye shearer cone. This 
this is a device sharer cone and what i showed you in this photograph basically a strip of photographic plate that is intercepting this device sharer cone now this is the incident beam hole there is a hole in the strip and this outgoing beam hole and you can see that this is the larger smaller d spacing and i can calculate the d spacing from the radius of this because this gives me the angle from the radius of the dubai camera and from lambda i can find out from this radius of this cone what is the d spacing so what is the d spacing so this experiment was done or is done to find out various d spacing <coughs> you can see various d spacings so will satisfy different angles because the angle 2d sin theta equal to lambda in this case it was monochromatic beam of copper k alpha so it was 1.54 angstrom it can be something else but usually in laboratory sources we use 1.54 angstrom so that lambda is known knowing the radius of this beam around the incident point we know the theta and once we know the theta 2d sin theta equal to lambda lambda is known we can find out d spacing so this experiment the detects the circles or the device sharer cones which gives us the d this if i reduce to a strip detector or a one dimensional position sensitive detector this gives one particular q or theta and what i showed you earlier this is x ray dubai camera but what you see here each one is one part of that dubai sharer cone from a powder crystal from a powder crystal so this is the very beginning of our knowledge about x ray diffraction but uh, basically this is a monochromatic x ray beam as i showed this is a specimen and they break up into the this is around this is the low angle and the specimen this is the outgoing beam this is the high angle so this is a, sorry i'm sorry the back reflected beam is high angle and the forward reflected beam in the low angle so this is around the this hole this particular radius this is the at the center of this circle and this is near the back scattered beam and you can see the back scattered x rays because of the atomic form factor they are of much lesser intensity than the forward scattered beam because the form factor for almost all atoms in case of x ray it fall like that form factor so with theta or with q so at large angle we have lesser intensity because of the form factor structure remaining same so we see the same circles same device sharer cones but with lower intensity when you do x ray diffraction we do exactly the same thing with neutrons in neutron sensitivity i mean in neutron crystallography a position sensitive detector is equivalent to the photographic plate only the size dictates how much of the cone that you are intercepting but they have better intensity resolution the instrument that i showed you it can identify the d spacing from the radius of the cone around this incoming and outgoing paths and <clears throat> but in case of uh, in case of neutron there is better intensity resolution and we can carry out phase determination or more detailed experiments through ridwell fitting so an ab initio crystallography is possible with single crystals and powders or uh, in single crystal not with powders there are various applications of neutron crystallography apart from physics i will also tell you how strains can be determined using neutron diffraction especially neutron diffraction because neutrons can penetrate deep in industrial pieces of materials which is not possible by any other uh, using any other radiation so also 
neutrons are unique for magnetic structure so we will discuss all those in the next lecture